Hello and welcome back to Heart of the Holt. As you may be aware, England do play against Belgium on Sunday. So Dan and I thought we would take a look at one of Belgium's most technically gifted players and goal scorers who also happen to play for Aston Villa. That is, of course, Luke Nillis. And as Dan and I aren't too well versed with Luke Nillis, we thought we'd interview those who were. So please buckle up, enjoy this video as we have the thoughts of fellow Heart of the Hulk contributor Jamie Yap and The Athletic's very own Greg Evans telling us all about Luke Nillis. I described him not only a great goal scorer, but a scorer of great goals as well. And he had the potential to really take Villa to the next level. The thought was getting somebody like Nillis in might just push them up a, up a couple of places and into that top three, four maybe, but sadly it never quite happened. First, we've got to set the scene. So here's fellow writer and contributor Jamie Yap, who is also our in-house Eredivisie expert. Dutch football in general in the 90s was slightly transitional. Um, there'd been the classic Dutch football of the 70s and then the 80s, they'd fallen away, then came back with a European Championship win. And then into the 90s, it was all about producing the next generation. Going in towards the sort of the second half of the 90s, the old traditional kind of battleground, which had always been what was known as the Klassica in Holland, which was Ajax and Feyenoord, was getting sort of a new presence in it with PSV, with some fantastic recruitment, you know, able to get players like Romario and Ronaldo before he blew up at Barcelona and into Milan. And of course, part of that PSV team that would go on to become title-winning challengers was Luke Nillis. Luke was very established, both domestically and internationally. He played at a couple of major tournaments for Belgium before he came to Villa at the time. So. Here in England, when we announced the signing, what was his reputation? Yeah. What did Villa fans know about Luke Nillis? I described him in, in the article I wrote re recently as not only a great goal scorer, but a scorer of great goals as well, because you know he always played with a smile on his face. His, his record was very prolific. But if you look through his highlights and, and, his, and his reels, you know, his goal clips, there are so many brilliant goals. So he'd done it in Holland, he'd done it on the international stage, albeit taking him a while to, to get going for Belgium. And, and there was lots of interest in from France, from Spain, Liverpool wanted to take him as well. But John Gregory looked through all, it, all his clips and, and, and had, basically what sold it, what sold Villa to him was the fact that John Gregory knew his game inside out. He knew exactly how he played. So it's clear to see that John Gregory knew exactly what Luke Nillis was about. But for you guys, who could we exactly compare Nilis to in the modern game? For people who haven't seen him, who would you say he, he oh. plays? Like, as you said, you, you alluded to Dennis Bergkamp earlier. Is yeah. he a Lewandowski type striker, maybe? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's a difficult one. He's sort of, um, at times, he had the sort of languid kind of finishing ability of someone like Berbatov. He, he did more work than, than Berbatov infamously ever did. But he had that same effortless finishing level that, that Berbatov had. I suppose Lewandowski's not a. Not a, not a bad comparison in some ways. I mean, he wasn't at the level that Lewandowski is, but then again, very few strikers are. Controversial, really. Other people might disagree, but the way I would try maybe describe him is similar to Berbatov, but, but without the lazy sort of languid style. You know, he, he liked to play attractive football. He liked to always uh, be attractive on the eye, he played with a smile on his face. And, you know, he wasn't just happy with just scoring a normal tapping goal. He wanted to score a spectacular goal. He was very much his own style, Danny. It's hard to, to really, you know, say anybody that was similar to him. Nillis couldn't have asked for a better start at Aston Villa, scoring an absolute screamer on his debut against Chelsea. When I saw the goal, um, I mean, I, I think I'd heard it on the radio as well, um, and I described it as a wonderful finish. Um, you, you watch it um, and it, yeah, it's a striker who knows exactly what he's doing. He positions himself excellently. His setup and finish is world class. It it just it's a striker who's played the game for years and you know, I think I can't remember who it was. I, whether it was was it Marcel Desailly, I think, who was marking him? I think I think it was man to man mark and I think it was Desailly who was on him. So I mean that's not a bad centre back to bamboozle and finish past. Unfortunately though for Nillis, things got much worse. The incident with 
with Ipswich goalkeeper Richard Wright must have, you know, had some really, not obviously physical lasting damage, but psychological as well. And it must have been tough for him to get around. But taking it back to that time once he had that injury, it seemed recoverable at first, if, if what I'm re reading is correct, but then the, the infection set in and stuff like that. Yeah, so obviously the injury occurred in September. He went straight into hospital in Ipswich straight, you know, after the injury. He was in the hospital there for two weeks. He had one operation immediately, you know, immediately after the game almost, and, and, and the doctor came in and said after, we almost, you almost lost your leg during that operation. We're not sure still if you're going to need an amputation. So he had to have further surgery. It, t it probably took him about two months to realise that there, were, there was going to be no way back then. And it got to the end of December. Doug Ellis called Nillis back to, to Birmingham and said, look, you've got to sign these papers to say that you know, you're know you going to retire and we'll sort out the insurance premium eventually for him. No, I think as soon as I saw it, you think the worst because you instantly know that it is obviously clearly it's a broken leg. A broken leg is in its in a recoverable form is a, at least a year out. And once you've got a player who's 33, especially an outfield player, you've got to think there's a good chance that that might that might be it for them as a player. Had his career not been cut short at Villa, there was a. a feeling with just how prolific he was at PSV and you only have to listen to the way that the likes of Van Nistel and Ronaldo talk about him as some of the one of the best players that they ever played with. Was there a feeling that you know he could not just cement himself as one of the better forwards in, in the Premier League but of the world and, and of that generation given how, just how frequently he scored goals? I mean I think there was one season with Van Nistelrooy and himself where they combined for about 48 I think it was 48 league goals in the in an Eredivisie season. It was, it was crazy. And do you feel that if he had had those two years that you, you spoke about in the Premier League with a club like Villa, who were just teetering on trying to crack that elite level, that he, he could have really had a legacy? Yeah, I think so. You know, he, he was, as I say, he was in the twilight of his career, but the, the, the goal that he scored against Chelsea showed his class. He firmly believed that he had at least two years in, in him. And he was really excited and looking forward to going to some of the other grounds in the country and showing what he was capable of. So, you know, he, he, you just have to look at his record. OK, he was 33, but I firmly believe he had, he had lots of games and goals in him still. Rightfully so, Nillis will be forever immortalised at Aston Villa for that goal against Chelsea. But there will forever be question marks cast over him and Aston Villa of what could have been had that freak accident not have happened.